Judge Glanville said he's more than happy to let them appeal any of the rulings he's made, any of the rulings he's made on the motions after the case is done, which we all know it's going to be several years until this case is completed because we're not even halfway through and Young Thug has been in jail for over two years now, I believe. So this is just bad and showing his bias already. So we've got some breaking news for you. There has just been another motion filed, not only to end this case, but to get Judge Glanville removed from this case completely. Now, this was actually filed with the Georgia Supreme Court. Now, as some of y'all may remember, we talked about in another video, Brian Steele actually went to the Supreme Court to appeal the decision or to appeal the contempt he was held in by Judge Glanville when he when brian Steele wouldn't give him the name of the person who leaked information to brian about the secret ex parte meeting that they had and in this meeting we've got information now that shows that they were meeting judge glanville and the prosecution and several other people were meeting with lil woody who is a sworn witness in this case which that's a no-no you can't do that all right so we now have this new document that has been filed and the Supreme Court is aware of everything that's going on in this situation. They know that Judge Glanville is just really having a, a chokehold on this entire case. And it seems like he wants things to go a certain way. Now, we're going to get into it here in a second. I do want to give credit to the person I found this document from, and that is Megan. And I'm going to mispronounce her name, but Megan Cuniff over on Twitter. And what does she say? What does she say about this document that was filed? She says, will the Georgia Supreme Court kick Judge Glanville off the Young Thug slash YSL trial? Doug Weinstein and JABT attorneys for DeMonte Kendrick filed an emergency petition today. All right. Here's the final. Here's the first page. I'll post the full document as soon as I get my Internet working. All right. Now, here's the first page. We're actually have access to the full document right now. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so y'all can see everything. And boy, when we get into what all is taking place in this document, it's it's a pretty serious accusation that they have against Judge Glanville. So check this out in the Supreme Court state of Georgia. We've got DeMonte Kendrick, the partition, the petitioner, excuse me, versus Chief Judge Glanville. All right, and he's going to have to respond to this and we'll see what the Supreme Court does here as well. DeMonte Kendrick's emergency petition for writ of. I'm going to mispronounce this, too. I tried to pronounce it earlier. I was struggling. Uh, Mandamus, Mandamus, I believe it is. And stay of proceedings. This is huge, y'all. Stay of proceedings. They're trying to shut this entire trial down. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. They name everyone here. We're going to skip ahead of that and then they lay out the table of contents. So we're going to get into some of the some more of the information that's in here and y'all will see it here in a second. They also issue the table of authorities. This is the case law that stated uh, some of this was used by Judge Glanville when he was saying that Brian Steele was going to be held in contempt and wasn't able to get out of the time he was supposed to serve. All right. So there's some of the rules. So we'll go down. Here we go. All right, this is all the information that we need and y'all wanted to see. Comes now DeMonte Kendrick, the petitioner, by and through his undersigned counsel and brings this emergency petition for WM, was what we're going to call it, and stay of proceedings, showing as follows. Jurisdiction and explanation of emergency, the nature of the petition. All right, here we go. The emergency petition concerns allegations of serious breaches of the Georgia code of judicial conduct that violate petitioner's state and federal constitutional rights all right they're about to go at judge glanville here in a second the petition relates to the conduct of chief Glen chief judge glanville and they're going to refer to him as glanville later on and not to any rulings or orders of the judge now this is this is important because if y'all remember when brian Steele and a couple others were filing motions for the judge to rec recuse himself. The judge said, hey, I'm not going to recuse myself because the reason you guys are saying you want me to recuse myself is because you don't like the rulings that I'm making. 
Now, this is why they're saying this here is that the petition relates to the conduct of Judge Glanville and not to a ruling that he's made. All right. So they need to clarify that there. The court has jurisdiction, jurisdiction over this matter under the Georgia and they have it listed here and they're talking about the Supreme Court. Right. And in the case at bar, original relief in the form of motions for recusal have been filed and denied three times by three respective move movements is probably movements yeah we've got brian Steele, we've got weinstein oh and kayla kayla was the third one y'all remember uh kayla bumpus she was woody's woody's ex-attorney the one that he fired and she later on said that he was doing her a favor because he knew she didn't want to be on the case and she was only supposed to be there for one day covering for someone she was the third person that filed a uh, motion for motion for recusal. All right. Likewise, Glanville has denied the movement's respective requests for a for a certificate of immediate review three times. And we talked about this as well. Just Glanville, he has to <laughs> if he doesn't say that they can file these motions and they can move forward with this and appeal then it doesn't happen which is one thing i find weird about the law system but i'm not going to go into that side because i don't know enough about, i'm not experienced enough about it glanville as chief judge has obstructed defense counsel's attempts to have a disinterested party review the numerous allegations contained in at least four affidavits which allege judicial misconduct and unfair proceedings these affidavits if true would constitute serious violations of the code of judicial ethics all right citing a lack of evidentiary foundation caused by glanville's own recal recalcitrace i don't know what that means caused by glanville's own recalcitrace i'm gonna have to look that up in refusing to provide a transcript stripped of a secret ex parte proceeding glanville has hinder defense's counsel's ability to effectively pursue relief by claiming judicial privilege while denying certificates of immediate relief. And we talked about this the other day saying that Judge Glanville decided that he wasn't going to let them have the transcript from the secret meeting. Now it comes out and he says, okay, I'll let you have the transcript, but some of it's going to be redacted and you're not going to get to see the whole thing. So at every stop, they're trying to get more clarity. They're trying to get more transparency from Judge Glanville. He's holding off and saying, nah, we're not we're not doing that. I don't have to let y'all know what took place in this meeting with a sworn witness, which y'all know or may not know. I don't know. You can't meet. You can't just meet with a sworn in witness by yourself like that. It's just not right. Anyway. Assuming this court would not let the opportunity to review the decisions on the multiple motions to recuse unless or until the underlying case was concluded, Glanville continues to hide behind a purported standard that his actions would be reviewed in hindsight for abuse of this uh, dis crush of oh, discretion. I don't know why I was struggling with that word. So basically what they're saying here is that Judge Glanville said he's more than happy to let them appeal any of the rulings he's made, any of the rulings he's made on the motions after the case is done, which we all know it's going to be several years until this case is completed because we're not even halfway through and Young Thug has been in jail for over two years now, I believe. So this is just bad and showing his bias already. Glanville's obstruction of defendants' right to a fair and impartial trial has risen to the level that defense counsel now believes all attempts to obtain relief in the Superior Court of Fulton County will be ineffective. Yeah, he's not moving. Three motions for recusal have been filed and denied, and two WMs are already attached to the instant case, which were filed and pending for more than about one year. Okay. And then they they have a note here showing when the first one was filed. We won't go over that. Therefore, any effort to file a WM in Fulton County that would be heard by Chief Judge Glanville would result in frustration and lack of accent. Yeah, they're saying Judge Glanville's not going to move. He's going to sit on it or he's just going to tell him no. Wow. Glanville's 
court is where Ritz go to die. Dang. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy that they put this in here. They said his court is where Ritz go where Ritz go to die. Wow. Yeah, that's that's kind of wild. But anyway, as the present petition for WM would go to Glanville if filed in Fulton County Superior Court, petitioner has no option other than for the Georgia Supreme Court to exercise in discretion and consider defendants claims, which I think they will. Yo, I, I honestly. I didn't think this would happen, but depending on what the Supreme Court does, if they look at this and they see that there are there is some evidence that Glanville has made moves that someone who that only someone who's biased would make. I mean, this this whole case, this whole thing could be a mistrial. I could see it happen now. Personally, I'm not again. I haven't practiced law. I'm not a law professional. This is just me looking at everything that's being presented here and has been presented in the past uh, few motions. I mean, they have a lot of evidence stacked up against it. Most recently in this ex parte meeting, a uh, secret ex parte proceeding was held on June 10th and attendance were Glanville. Lil Woody, Prosecutors Love and, and Hilton, that's Simone, uh, Simone Hilton, investigators from the Fulton County DA's office, they don't say how many people were there, and members of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office. As a result of the proceeding on June 12, 2024, petitioner requested that the, pres that the presiding judge, Glanville, recuse himself from the petitioner's trial for, among other counts, count two, and this is what um the petitioner is being charged for despite despite preceding all requirements to inform un i apologize y'all despite preceding preceding all requirements of uniform superior court rule 25 the motion for recuser recusal was some of <laughs> was summarily denied without following the required procedure in this section. All right. Glanville denied a request for a certificate of immediate review. A formal order denying the motion was entered on June 14th, two days after the motion for recusal was filed. Jeez. Yeah. Judge, he's he's holding up this whole case. As chief judge of the Fulton County Superior Court, Glanville holds a unique position within the county, which carries a significant amount of weight and power among his fellow county judges. You could argue with him being the chief judge especially in this case that judge glanville is the highest judge in fulton county all right and i mean with it being in fulton county which is i mean the it, it's in atlanta right which atlanta is the the capital the highest city in this state i mean you could argue that judge glanville is one of the highest judges in this state so he definitely has a lot of power. He has a lot of decision making when it comes to this case specifically, which is the biggest case that has existed in the history of the state of Georgia and definitely in the history of Fulton County. As chief judge of Fulton County Superior Court, Glanville holds a unique position within the within the county, which carries a significant amount of weight and power among his fellow county judges. Glanville has repeatedly refused to issue a certificate of immediate review that would permit the, the Georgia Court of Appeals to review his decision on the recusal motion. Now, with the with these certificates of immediate review, right, Judge Glanville, basically what the defense is saying is we want this to we want our motion to be immediately moved forward and reviewed so we can get this taken care of. Judge Glanville is the one that gets to make the decision. And basically this certificate of immediate review, he has to give to the defense to allow them to appeal this decision, right? So if he says no, then they can't, the defense can't do anything. They can't move forward. And if judge Glanville didn't have anything to hide, if he wasn't doing anything wrong, then you would think he'd be like, yeah, just go ahead. Here's the certificate of immediate review, take it to appeals. I haven't done anything wrong. I don't care if y'all file this motion to recuse because I'm in the clear, but with him pushing back, not one, not two, not, but three times, 
Uh, it's it's just not looking great for him. And I think the Supreme Court is going to see that again. The law is crazy. We don't know what all other politics are going on behind the scenes, but the evidence is is there for sure. All right. It says, uh, therefore, invoking the original jurisdiction of this court to issue writs is petitioners only recourse. Right. So they said we had to go to the Supreme Court. We didn't have a choice. If not considered by this honorable court, the still incarcerated defendant would be forced to wait for at least another year or more of the trial before seeking appellate review. The appellate procedure in the case at bar will be extremely lengthy and cumbersome with more than a year's worth of transcripts to review. Yeah, I mean, y'all see how long just this, just these few interviews with little Woody have gone. Imagine them having to review all of these transcripts from this proceeding, from the proceedings that already have taken place. I mean, it would be crazy. Uh, emergency relief is requested because the witness that was coerced by Glanville, talking about Little Woody, is presently on the witness stand. Which again, this is a big deal. Can't be doing that. Absent emergency relief from this court. In some form, Glanville will control the scope and the substance of the undersigned counsel's cross-examination of Little Woody. Now, what they're saying here is, it says, absent of emergency relief, this court, in some, this, from this court, in some form, Glanville will control the scope and substance of undersigned counsel's cross-examination from Little Woody. Basically, what they're saying is the defense plans on cross-examining Lil Woody once they're done, once the prosecution's done presenting their case and, you know, questioning him initially, right? So once they get done with that, when it comes to the defense's time to cross-examine him, what do you guys think the first question they're going to ask Lil Woody is? And y'all have to let me know, let me know in the comments and in the chat. The first question they're going to ask Lil Woody is, what happened in the secret meeting? What did, judge, what did the judge say to you? What was the prosecuting prosecution pressuring you and what did you say in this meeting little woody because we know that little woody has immunity right so anything he says that he did and when it comes to this case in the past he's not going to have to be held accountable for and one of the things he said he was going to say to the prosecution was that he killed big nut now what happens if he says that if little woody says I killed Big Nut and he said to the prosecution that I killed Big Nut, then this whole case against Young Thug falls apart. So again, this is points towards Lil Woody. One, because he doesn't want to have to go back in the streets being looked at as a snitch. Two, he got immunity. He's taken the fall for the murder of Big Nut. He can't be held accountable for it, right? And then the case goes off of Young Thug. Young Thug, I believe, would look at that favorably, right? So, uh, this is this is going to be interesting because once they once the defense goes to cross examine Lil Woody, he's going to want to cooperate with them. Lil Woody, as we've seen, he does not want to be there. He doesn't want to work with the prosecution. He pled the fifth, and he was sitting in jail for the whole weekend because he didn't want to cooperate. So when the defense comes up there and they're trying to get Lil Woody to say all this stuff isn't true and that he did certain things he's going to help them the problem is judge glanville is controlling the case so when they get to the cross-examination judge glanville can say no you can't ask him that you're not going to ask him about the meeting you're not going to ask him what he said what he said or what he's saying is hearsay it's redacted from the transcript and judge glanville is basically going to shut this whole situation down which to me would even look more like he is on the side of the prosecution it's just the the whole thing is just a mess anticipated areas of cross-examination include brady material that counsel believes was disclosed at the proceeding but not provided to counsel as required by law transcripts as well as the coercive joint efforts of the bench and state Given the conduct during the ex parte proceedings, at least an appearance of impropriety, if not actual impropriety, cast a pall over any ruling that Glanville may make during the council's cross-examination of Copeland. Exactly. And that's kind of what we just talked about. 
Judge Glanville can basically shut down any questions about the ex parte meeting or any questions they have in general, which would not be good for the defense because their hands are going to be tied and they won't be able to make their case even more for why there should be a mistrial and or why Judge Glanville should recuse himself. All right, relief sought. Here's what they want. As Glanville has found petitioner's motion to, for recusal to have been filed and presented in a timely fashion, which he said, he said, okay, that's fine. You filed this. It all looks good, but I'm not going to grant you your, uh, I want to use the exact wording here. I'm not going to give you permission to move forward with a certificate of immediate review is what it's called, right? The Weinstein affidavit to be legally, su legally sufficient and the affidavit containing facts that if proven would warrant recusal petitioners request this court grant a writ directing Glanville to adhere to rule 225.3 and thus assign the motion for recusal for hearing before an unbiased judge. All right, so they're taking shots at Judge Glanville and saying, hey, Supreme Court, he's clearly wrong in this case. You can look and see several instances where he's been wrong, where he's tried to lean more towards giving the prosecution what they need and want instead of making this a fair and unbiased trial you guys have to step in you have to do your job and you have to say judge glanville you got to step down from this case all right so judge glanville has made it clear he's not going to step down willingly it's time for you guys to step up partitioner further acts of this court partitioner further ask of this court that proceedings in the trial in this section be stayed Pending resolution of the motion for recusal. Wow. Petitioner further asked this court for a writ ordering Glanville to produce immediately and certainly no later than prior to the court of cross-examination of Lil Woody, an unredacted transcript to defendants of the secret ex parte proceedings held on June 12, 2024. Petitioner also asked this court that it enter any further writs or orders it deems appropriate given the actions of Glanville. Okay, so they're basically saying here, hey, we want the unredacted transcripts. We wanna be able to review them before we get Lil Woody on the stand because y'all know the first thing we're gonna ask him is what took place in this secret meeting because we wanna to move to, we wanna to move towards a mistrial because this whole thing has been messed up the entire time. I can't, can y'all imagine being a part of this case? I mean, in, in, in every aspect, whether you're an attorney in this case, Judge Glanville, prosecution, Lil Woody, you're a defendant, you're on the jury, you're a recorder. I mean, imagine what the recorder's thinking. She's writing all this down and seeing all of this happen, just sitting there taking notes. She knows what's going on more than anyone, I'm sure. This is crazy. Whether Glanville, uh, this is the issues presented, whether Glanville was correct in failing to follow the mandates of this USCR 25.3 by refusing to refer the motion for recusal to an unbiased judge for hearing following argument on June 12, 2024, particularly after making findings in an order of June 14th, 2024, that the motion was timely, the attached affidavit was legally sufficient, and that the affidavit contains assertions of fact to support the allegations of bias and impartiality. And then we got a lot more here. They're basically talking about the procedural history, what went on, giving some background about the entire case. They talk more about the secret meeting, which we've covered in length. And y'all know about that secret meeting took place. The defense wasn't allowed to be there. So there's a lot to go into. This whole thing is 85 pages long. We're not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to link this particular document in the description of this video. If y'all want to review it for yourselves, if you have any thoughts or if you have any more comments, make sure you leave them in the comment section of this video too. Let me know what you think as well. Uh, is this case going to come to a mistrial? What's the Supreme Court going to do? And is Judge Glanville going to be removed from this case? First of all, 